so I think this is interesting. Um, electromagnetic waves are actually transverse waves, right? And if you if you saw a snapshot of an electromagnetic wave at one instant, uh, if we could do this, right, uh, you would see that the electric field, say, for example, in this case, might be up and down parallel to the, the y-axis here, right? And the magnetic field uh, is actually parallel to the z-axis, is perpendicular. So they're trying to draw that as being out of the page, okay? so. The, the, the plane in which this electric field lies is this property of polarization. By default, we've decided that the, the direction of polarization is the direction of the electric field and not the magnetic field. It could be you know, one or the other, but that's what we decided, right? So if you think about uh, waves on like a spring or a string or something like that, right, we could have the waves going up and down. We could also have them going side to side and any endless you know, variations. They can be going at some angle like that. Right, um, so so the the plane of the polarization, the plane in which the electric field lies, that is the property of its polarization. That's its polarization angle, as it were. Okay, um, and you might imagine that there are that there are uh, ways to take, say, maybe a rope like this and allow only vertical motion to happen and stop horizontal motion. Right, so this is a vertical polarizer here. Right. Um, there are ways to do that with light. Okay, it's not exactly as, as simple as this, but it's the same basic idea. You, you short circuit the electric field in one direction, but allow it in the other direction. Okay, um, and if you think about this, if the light, if unpolarized light comes on one of those filters, right, about half of the light is actually vertically polarized and half is horizontally, so it lets through half of the watts per square meter. Right? So we, when we talk about intensity, we talk about the power, the, the energy in watts, joules per second, right? Joules per second in, uh, incident on a square meter of area, right? And so this is a, a key concept here, right? Is that a polarizer, if it's 100% you know, efficient and all this stuff, right? Ideally, if, if you know, 100 watts per square meter is, on, is incident on this side, unpolarized, right? What gets through is 50 watts per square meter. Okay, um, and and things that you know, showing things vertically and things horizontally here, and and of course the, the thing, the way this works is that of course the, you know, if the if the filter is vertically polarized and you've got uh, a light ray that is at some angle, it actually lets through, it blocks this component of the light, but it lets that component through, right? So on the average, the light is half of it vertically polarized, and that's why this thing cuts it by a factor of a half. Okay. Um, and then the other thing you can do is, of course, you can have two filters, right? And that's the notion here is that we have, uh, uh, you know, here we've got no light at all or something like that, right? But we, you know, we've got a vertical one that, that, uh, that uh, uh, cuts out half the light. So we go from maybe twice some initial thing, right, to on this side one time that, right? And then here's this formula that if there's some angle, if you've got, uh, let's say you've got a vertical polarizer, right, and then you put on top of it some polarizer that's maybe polarized in this direction, right? That's, there's some angle in between there, right? So that's that angle, right? This is, this guy here, the thing that, that keep in mind is that that has to be polarized light, okay? So whatever you plug into this formula, that guy there has to be polarized, and then this is what makes it through, okay? This is our eye on the other side, okay? So let's do an example of this of a two uh, polarizer problem, okay? Two polarizers are an angle of 37 degrees with each other. So, so maybe, maybe one of them is, whoops, like this, right? Vertically, right? And then this guy is like 37 degrees, right? That angle there, right? We put this thing on top of there and, and that's a 37 degree angle, right? So there's 235 watts per square meter, right? And then here's our, our first filter is like this, right? Okay, on the other side of that, half of the light will be, this is unpolarized, right? Half of the light is going to make it through this first filter. So 235 divided by 2, 235 divided by 2 is 117.5 watts per square meter. It makes it through here. So, so this, is, this is what comes in, right? Now we've got that, and now we've got this uh, this other filter here that's at a 37 degree angle, right? Like this. 
Okay, so now we can use our fancy formula in that, that uh, here's our I naught, right? Okay, and now this intensity over here is going to be our I naught cos squared theta, right? Okay, so let's plug it in. 117.5 cos squared of 37 degrees. Okay, so now we're ready. First, I'm going to check the mode on my calculator. Okay, I'm in degrees. All right, 117.5, whoops, uh, times parentheses, cos 37, right parentheses, squared, 74.94. And that's watts per square meter, right? So 75, roughly 75 watts per square meter. Okay, so um, yeah, that's generally just don't don't forget that if it's unpolarized light coming in, right, half of it makes it through the first filter. So that's why we've got this, right, and then uh, then you use this formula once it's polarized, right. This is polarized, right. Now we can use this formula, right. This this thing here has to be polarized already for this to be relevant, already. 